take a wee moment and pray for these little lambs that has gone upstairs. It's lovely to see them. And let us pray now as the Lord would protect them upstairs. Lord, we thank you for the little children amongst us. And we thank you, Lord, dearly so much for them. And our prayer would be, save them, Lord. And as they slip upstairs now to their wee crash, bless the one who will tell them the Bible story and bless those that look after them and protect them. And Lord, now we pray that we would settle down and as we turn to the Scriptures, we would hear thy voice. We pray in our Savior's name. Amen. Throughout, throughout the sacred pages of Holy Scripture, throughout the sacred pages of Holy Scripture, you'll find countless, countless of master keys, master keys of a unique form. Master keys that unlock the door. To real guaranteed blessing. But each master key that you'll find in the sacred page of Holy Scripture, you'll find that each one is divinely cut, divinely cut by the master's hand. Each master key is unique. Unique because each of these master keys unlocks the door to particular kinds of blessing. Now, I know, child of God, the Lord blesses you and I every day. I know that. I know there's not a day goes by that the Lord doesn't bless us. My goodness, His blessings are unnumberable. But do you know something, this child of God? There's something the Lord wants you and I to know. There are certain blessings that are in store for us. But we don't possess them. There are unique blessings in store for us, but we don't possess them this morning. And the reason is, is because we don't possess the master key to unlock the doors that we can obtain. Last Lord's Day, you will remember, God showed us and God spoke to us concerning the master key for prayer. Oh, there's a master key for prayer. A master key this morning that the Lord showed us that guarantees blessing in your prayer life. And so many of God's people today are frustrated with their prayer life. They're struggling in their prayer life. But you'll remember last Lord's Day, the Lord spoke to us and challenged us with the, the master key for prayer. You remember where the master key was found, I trust? John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 7. Here's the master key. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto thee. You know, friends, this morning there's a condition. If you really want answered prayer, God to bless your prayer life, first of all, you have to abide in Him. 
A lot of people get up and preach, and they preach nonsense. They tell you as long as you feel. I know you need to have faith. And if you have the right faith and you pray for whatever you want, the Lord will answer and the Lord will give it to you because that's what the tax says. That's not what the tax says at all. The tax doesn't say, ask whatever ye will and it shall be done unto you. No, no, no. The tax says this this morning. If ye abide in me. A lot of boys don't preach that. If, if, there's the clause. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Because do you see, child of God, if you abide in him, and his word abides in, in you, whatsoever you ask, you'll not be asking according to the flesh. You won't be asking according to your desires. You'll, be, you'll not be praying according to your will. You'll be praying according to his will. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may, because of the desire of the lust of the flesh. But here's another master key this morning, and there's a brother in the Lord talking to me on the phone this week, and we were talking about the Word of God, and we were talking about the Lord, and he mentioned this verse, and the Lord branded it upon my heart and says, that's the message for somebody in the Lord's day morning. And this one verse this morning is the master key to a real blessing. And many people don't possess this blessing. God's people should, but they don't. You know what the blessing is? The blessing of peace of mind. Do you know, friends, this morning, there's so many Christians today, and that's one thing they don't possess, peace of mind. So many of God's people today are going about troubled. Their minds are in turmoil. And I'll tell you something now, friends, peace of mind is not something that money can buy. Peace of mind is not something prosperity can give. I'll tell you something now. Peace of mind this morning is not something that, that religion can give. And yet it's a blessing God wants you to have, and that's the blessing of peace of mind. You don't have it, but you can have it. And here's the master key for you to unlock the door with that will allow you to have peace of mind. Let's come to this master key this morning, and I'll tell you where you'll find it. You'll find it in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 26, please. The prophecy of Isaiah, and we're in chapter 26. Now, I'm going to just read my text for the sake of time. And it's Isaiah chapter 26, and it's verse 3. Now, let's listen to the Word of God, because here's the master key to real peace that you long to have. Now, let's read it slowly, and let's read it carefully. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stead on thee because he trusteth in thee. Now, let me just read that text one more time and let it sink now into your mind and into your heart. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stead on thee because he trusteth in thee. We know the Lord will bless that text to our hearts this morning. A master key for peace 
that is divinely cut. I wonder this morning, is there somebody in this meeting? I believe there is. Your mind's in turmoil. Your mind longs for peace. Oh, you're saved by God's grace, but you've no peace of mind, dear. You're redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb, but you've no peace of mind, sir. You're saved by God's grace, but you've no peace. No peace of mind. Well, God wants to speak to you this morning through this text. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 is the master key that is needed to unlock the door so that you can possess real peace of man. Notice how the text opens this morning, because there you have the glorious assurance for peace. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Now, there's the glorious assurance for peace. The text doesn't begin with, thou might keep him in perfect peace. I want you to notice that text that says there, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. You know, that's the glorious assurance of this text this morning. But I wonder this morning, dear child of God, have you this glorious assurance at this moment? Do you believe the opening phrase of, of, of that text, thou wilt keep him in, in perfect peace? Many long for it. Many long to be in that position. I'll tell you what the text doesn't say either. The text doesn't say, Thou will keep him or her out of trouble. No. It doesn't say in the text, Thou will keep him or her out of fear. No. What does it really mean? It means, Thou will keep him in perfect peace in trouble. Well, that's what it means. That's what it means. You know, child of God this morning, that's a powerful, promising assurance. You long for it, don't you, dear? You long for it, sir. To have that real, lasting peace of mind. Do you know in the original Hebrew it says, and I'm no Hebrew scholar, instead of, instead of the word perfect, it's the word peace, and peace appears twice. Thou wilt keep him in peace, peace whose mind is stead on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And from the original translation, what that means is this, thou wilt keep him in peace, of absolute perfection. That's what it means. This is no ordinary peace, child of God. This is peace this morning of utmost perfection. Many times we quote this verse, but we feel to possess the blessing that comes from it. You know, dear, dear child of God, 
I want you to know something this morning that this glorious assurance is real. I'm going to bring you two people. One you don't know, one you may know. First man, I shared the story at the senior citizens just the last time we were there. It's the story of Bert Frazine. Bert Frazine was an accomplished gospel singer and was a very close friend of George Beverly Shea. He was an American soldier during the awful days of the Second World War. And there was an awful battle raged during the Second World War, and it was called the Battle of the Bulge. Many American soldiers died at that battle. Bert Frazine, he was an American commando who went out into an open field, open field to make a clearing for the men that was coming behind as Bert Frazine went out into the clearing, German soldiers opened up and machine gun bullets ripped through his legs and he fell to the ground. With blood pouring from his body, Bert Frazine believed that this was it. Then he noticed a German soldier, an enemy soldier, coming across to him with drawn bayonet. And he began to sing his mother's favorite hymn. There is a name I love so dear, like sweetest music to my ear. And when my heart is troubled, filled with fear, Jesus, whispers peace. The guns fell silent. And as he opened his eyes, the German soldier was standing over him. And he began to sing the hymn again. There is a name so dear, sweetest, to the, sweetest music to the ear. And when my heart is troubled, Filled with fear, Jesus whispers peace. And as he began to sing it, he felt the German's hands going under his back and lifting him. And everybody watched these sacred moments as the German soldier carried him over to his own men. Before the German soldier sat him down, he looked down upon Bert Frazine and said this, Sing it again. Sing it again. Bert Frazine knew what it was to possess perfect peace. On our way down here yesterday afternoon, Tracy and I called with Mrs. Mary Copeland. Mary at the moment is staying with her son-in-law, Colin, Colin and her, her daughter, Beverly. We called to see Mary. As we sat at the side of the bed, there was nothing, only radiance came from her face. She shared with us her testimony as to how she got saved. And we all know this morning she was diagnosed with cancer a number of weeks ago. But before we left, this is what Mary said. Ever since I have been diagnosed, I know nothing only peace. A peace I cannot describe. A peace that has come from heaven. Mary Copeland, 
experiences this glorious assurance because she is being kept in perfect peace. The glorious assurance of the text. I want you to know, secondly, in that text, there's something far more important than that. And I want you to notice in that text, there's the great anchor for peace. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. It doesn't say whose heart is stead on thee. No, no, not at all. Whose mind is stead on thee. Do you know the human mind is the most fragile part of the human being? And this tax child of God unlocks the door to allow us to see how we can really possess perfect peace this morning. Thou shalt keep I shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stead on thee. Do you see that word stead? It only appears once in the Hebrew language. And it means to hold firm or to be fastened firmly. It means anchored. Whose mind has stayed on thee? Tell me something, sister, this morning. Is your mind in turn, my love? If it is, here's the problem. What have you, your mind, anchored on? What about you, sir? Your mind's in the air. You don't know what any is up or what any is down this morning. You don't know. But this text this morning gives you an anchor for the mind. Thank God there's an anchor to hold our minds upon. And that anchor is Christ. Tell me something, brother. Tell me something, sister. Is your mind anchored on Christ this morning? Here's the key. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stead, rock solid, on Christ. The secret of perfect peace is not leaning on your own understanding at all. The meaning of real peace is not all about running to the doctor. There's people running to the doctors all their life and they still have an ounce of peace. The answer for real peace is when your mind is stayed on him just like that. Your mind has stayed on him. Oh, child of God, this morning, your mind knows pain. Your mind, your mind knows nothing only pressures. Ah, but your mind knows nothing about peace this morning. And child of God, lovingly and tenderly, God wants to say this. You need to anchor your mind on Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul gives us the reason as to why we must anchor our minds on Christ. And here's the reason. Ephesians 2.14, He is our peace. He, that's perfect peace. Is, that's present peace. He is our peace. That's personal peace. And child of God, this morning, this is perhaps where you're going wrong. 
This is why, listen, I'm throwing myself among you because I'm no different from anybody. Maybe this is why we all go wrong. Our minds are anchored in everything apart from Christ. I had a lady on the phone with me this week, Wednesday evening. Nobody from this church. Pastor George, will you pray for me? He says, I will. She calls me Pastor George. Not that I'm into titles or not, but that's what she gave me. Will you pray for me? She says, I can take no more. I says, what's wrong, dear? She says, it's my daughter. She's putting her head away with it. And I said to this sister, listen, you've wrung the right person because I know all about it. I know all about it. I says, do you believe that we promise in Genesis 18, 14? She says, why, what does Genesis 8, 18 and verse 14 say? It says, is anything too hard for the Lord? And I said, dear, isn't it funny that we should be talking like this because the Lord has given me a message for the Lord's Day morning. Would you mind if I tell the wee story? I'm not going to mention her name. But I will say this. She herself has been such a blessing to many over the years. And I says, dear, when the storms of life are raging and the winds of adversity are blowing and the storm is beyond our control and the mind is being tossed almost into depression and dear knows what, I says there's still an anchor to hold on to. I says, listen, dear, Anchor your troubled mind on Christ, not on the circumstance. And I quoted her this text, and she wrote it down, and she says, I'm going to go, and I'm going to pray for that. And I says, dear, before we get up, before we do anything, I'm going to get on my knees here. And I got on my knees where I was and with her over the telephone I prayed for her. Sometimes we all miss the mark miserably. We fail to possess the real peace that God has for us because our minds are not anchored in Christ. Edward Biggerstaff, the writer of our closing hymn, was a soundly saved man stood at the grave of his preacher's son. His son was a preacher. And as he stood at the grave that day, looking down into the cold grave where his son in the coffin was lying, he said, you know, an awesome peace flooded my soul. Undescribable was the way he put it. And as he stood there looking into that grave, our text came to his mind where it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stead on thee because he trusteth in thee. And as he stood there, these words came into his mind. Peace, perfect peace, with sorrows surging round, on Jesus' bosom nothing but calm, calm be found. The glorious assurance for peace, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, the great anchor for peace, whose mind is stead on thee.
But here's the godliest attitude for peace. Because he trusteth in thee. I say and I call that the godliest attitude because what other way could you call that? It wouldn't be godly if you didn't trust in him. Do you remember David when he was being haunted and hounded by Absalom? Do you remember when he penned Psalm 3? Do you remember when it comes down to the third or fourth verse, he writes these words, in the midst of the trouble and the trial and the turmoil, he writes these words, I laid me down and slept, and I awake. For the Lord sustained me. As Jeremiah said in 17 and 7, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Bertie Johnson used to drill this into me. If there's anything the Lord loves us when his children trust in him. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. If there's a wee message that the Lord wants to bring to your heart just now as God's message comes to a close. It'll have to be from the words of Psalm 62 and verse 8. O oh, troubled mind, are you listening now? Troubled heart, are you listening? Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. For God is our refuge. May we leave the tabernacle this morning with our main saying this. I have anchored on Jesus the storms of life I'll breathe. I've anchored on Jesus. I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored on Jesus, for He has power to save. For I have anchored on the rock of ages. The lovely thought about the master key for peace is this. You can turn it upside down and it still works. No matter what way you turn it, it still works. Even when you quote the verse backwards, it means the same thing. Because he trusteth in thee, whose mind is stead on thee, thou will keep him in perfect peace. It's the same message. Because he trusteth in thee. Who? Whose mind is stead on thee, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 is the master key for peace. Peace that your mind needs. I can't give it to you. Nobody can. The Lord can. But you must believe it to take it and to make it yours. Thou 
will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusteth. He trusteth in thee. And may God bless his word to that troubled mind of yours for his name's sake. Amen. We're going to say.